see another beautiful day, Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you, hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Move for your people, Lord, that's here today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And those that are on their way, Lord. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Cover them with the blood of Jesus as they make their way here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Bless our pastor, Lord, and his wife, Lord. Meet their needs, both naturally and spiritually, Lord. In the name of Jesus, continue to strengthen our pastor's inner man, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Lord, let the word today that come across this pulpit, Lord, let it sink into our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Meet the needs of all your people here today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He lives, he lives, he lives in me. Oh, he lives in me. Jesus Christ, the King of all things. Oh, he lives in me. He lives, he lives, he lives in me. Oh, he Jesus. 
you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to leave some space if anyone has a testimony this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing this last song. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, yeah. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you.
As a son, as a Lord, I just want to thank you. How many want to thank him for another day? How many want to thank him for food to eat? How many want to thank him for health and strength? How many want to thank him for being alive? Welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. You're just so good to me. I was like, I thought about that song that Brother Wanted you to say, Holy Ghost got my mind, and my mind is gone. I said, Holy Ghost got my mind, and my mind is gone. Let the Holy Ghost get your mind, and you won't worry about everything right now. How many of you pray to God? We worry about everything because our mind is upon the world and not upon Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. I ain't preaching y'all, boy. Mike's going to preach. So y'all just stand to your feet. Come on, stand, 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 stand. Pray God, give God a good hand. And brother Michael prayer and stuff, come out and take the sermon today. Hallelujah, give Jesus a dirty hand, pray. Brother Michael. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We appreciate being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Y'all cold enough today? Amen. Thank God. I guess the cold kept some people away from church. Amen. 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 You're not just a God in the sunshine, but you're God in the snowstorm and ice storm. You're God in the rain and when the thunder is rolling. You're God in our trials and in our tests and in our hardship. You're still good, Lord, as Sister Brenda was singing. You're still good to your people, Lord, even though we go through hard times. We find your grace and we find your mercy. You said the children of Israel found grace in the wilderness. Help us to find grace in these hard times, in these cold days. And Lord, the Moore family, that you would strengthen them and give them grace, Lord, to get through this time. And Lord, as we stand behind them, as we're able to pray for them and hold up their hands, we ask you to move for them. Lord, we ask you to move for all these that are going through. Continue to strengthen Brother James and Sister Leron. Thank you for bringing him through that surgery. On Friday, Lord, we appreciate your mercies and your grace. Lord, we know doctors do what they can, but you're the Lord that heals. Lord, our lives are in your hand. Continue to strengthen all the bereaved families, along with the Moore family. Continue to heal and strengthen Pop Henderson in his absence on the day. Sister Tawanda, Sister Triplett, that we continue to hold up in prayer. Lord, so many needs, Lord, at this time. Lord, we ask you to raise up prayer warriors, men and women to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you give us a throne of grace that we can come to and let our petition be made known unto God. We pray for all the needs of these that are here on today, Lord, that you don't send us away fast and don't send us away hungry. Lord, give us all a little matter from heaven. Meet the needs of every family that's represented here today. You said God would supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ. Search us out through this congregation. Lord, let every need be met, Father, if it's healing, if it's deliverance, if it's salvation. Lord, if some just need food or whatever is needed, Lord, make the need, Lord, supply the need. We look to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord as you see it. Amen. We thank God for you being in the house of prayer. Amen. Some folk don't come out when it's cold, but I need Jesus when it's cold and when it's hot. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all need the Lord this morning? Yeah. Got a lot of saints from the country yeah. down here. Good to have y'all. Amen. In the house of prayer. Thank up for some that's missing. Thank God for you being here. Amen. I tell you, there's a lot going on, but I thank God for being in the house of God. Amen. God is a good God. And, uh, Mother Moore and Brother Walter is going to let us know uh, when the funeral arrangements are. Let us it's know as soon as you can. It's going to be February 1st. 
February first. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, where is that? Not the third, I mean. The third, okay. All right, let us know uh, after service so we can get it announced next Sunday. Amen. So as many as can can get over there and be with y'all. Sister Brown gonna be preaching next Sunday. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it, brother and sister Brown. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Hey, God is good, and I don't want to slack up serving God because of the condition of the nation or the weather or nothing that's going on. People want to dig in. Amen. I want to get wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I can't afford, amen, to slack up on the Lord because of hard times. Y'all watch the news and all that's going on. There's a lot going on in the news. Amen. Let us know that the end of the world is coming. Good to see my sister here. We haven't seen her in a while. Amen. But the ends of the world has come on us. If you got any kind of news that you get through the internet or television, you see all this happening. It's stuff that the Lord prophesied. Amen. Years ago, ain't that right? 2,000 years ago, everything we're seeing has been what the Lord has prophesied would come. So don't be, amen, troubled because of what's coming on the world because the Lord told us it was coming. But he's going to bring his people through it. Y'all believe that? Amen. The Lord is going to bring his people through these hard times. Amen. We're still praying for Sister Hunt and her family. They had a, a tragic loss and funeral on Friday. There is so much going on. So much going on. We're praying for Sister Johnson in Tulsa. Amen. She uh, was in the hospital yesterday. And we haven't had any updates. But we're praying for her and Sister Pearlie and Joanne. Let me see James Earl in the service. You weren't here last week, was you? Okay, you was doing that thing you told me about. All right, then. Hi. Uh, he's laughing. All right, we'll find out what that means later. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Amen. But well, we're glad to be in the house of prayer on today. Amen. Y'all doing all right out there? Sister Gloria, way back in the back 40. We don't see her much. She's in St. Louis. All right. Sister Gloria's uh, borderline hermit. She don't come out of her house much. Amen. She loves to be on the land at church and in her house. That's about it, ain't it? Amen. But she's here in St. Louis today. Good to see all of y'all. She's caught on the guitar. Amen. Brother Ricky on the drums. And we needed that help today. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. So glad to have you all in the house of prayer. We're going to go into the Word and talk to you as we feel led. Appreciate this water. Amen. Thank God. Somebody cut off the fans. I don't know who needs to be cooler. It's only 19 degrees outside. Amen. Thank God. Cut off the fans. I'm wondering what that was about. Praise the Lord. Unless they're not on reverse. No, they're not on reverse. Amen. But we're going to go to the scriptures today and read you a few scriptures and talk to you as the Lord allows us on this morning. To Genesis, the second chapter. Praise the Lord Jesus. Genesis 2. And we're going to read here verse 7. Then we're going to go to the third chapter and read a verse 7. We usually like to preach a lot of gospel up here, but today's going to be a little different. I believe the Lord will have his way. Genesis 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Switch over to the third chapter. This is after the fall, after Eve ate of the tree and gave to Adam, and Adam ate of the tree. And the Lord is speaking here to Adam, just this verse 19, In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Let's go over to the Gospel of Matthew and read a little bit of the Lord's Prayer, or maybe all of it, Matthew 6. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Let's go ahead and start at verse uh, 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is 
in heaven. And we'll stop there and go over to the epistle of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We're going to start reading here. Let's start reading here at verse uh, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God. I just lost something, but I don't know what I lost, but I lost something. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. How many's got troubles? Okay, that's a few of y'all. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, as he's saying here, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about, where in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. What's the purpose? That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these scriptures on this morning. The inspiration of your spirit, Lord, that you are reaching to your people. Lord, you've always reached to your people through your voice, through your word. Give us an ear to hear on today. Bless, Lord, and meet the needs, Lord, that are in the service through your word. You say you sent your word and healed them. You said by the word that we were clean, through the word that was spoken to us. Lord, make a difference in our lives through this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. And from this verse 7, I want to talk to you as briefly as I can on earthen vessels, earthen vessels, that God has done something in the earth, that God has sown something in the earth. How many believe the Lord is still here with us? Amen. That God has not forsaken the earth. When Jesus was resurrected, he didn't leave the earth without hope. He sold something here in the earth, and God is still wanting to move for his people. That's a little bad, whatever that is. Still wants to move for his people. Still wants to move and bless the sinner. And that's why we don't write people off in the kingdom of God. That God, by his word, by his spirit, by his miracle, has a way still to reach you. No matter how low your life has gotten, God has placed something in the earth still. So the Bible says in Romans 10, we don't have to say who's going to go up to heaven and bring it down or who's going to go into the deep and bring it up. He said the word is close to you, even the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that God will save you. That God has still a way in the earth to reach you. So Paul said in Corinthians, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. That perplexed means we don't know what to do. Sometimes you can go through so much, you don't know what to do. But he said we're not hopeless. That God has not left us without hope. That no matter how low you get, you are not in despair. You don't have to think about taking your life or committing suicide because even though we sometimes get perplexed, we scratch our head, God, I don't know which way I'm going to turn from here. I'm telling you, God has an answer in the earth for your life that he has a way made for you. They were, in the, they were coming out of Egypt and came up against the Red Sea and they thought we're going to die here today and sometimes it looks like there's no way out but the Lord spoke to Moses, speak to the people that they go forward, stretch forth your eye and God opened up the Red Sea and made a way for them when it looked like there was
was no way to be made. What am I saying? I'm saying the Lord can make a way for you when you don't know how you're going to get through what you're going through. God always has a way made because he always has a people and a will of God in the earth for whatever time you're living in, you ain't got to be living in the Bible time. 2024, there is an answer for you. There's a way made for you. Amen. So Paul said we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, he said when you pray, pray, Father, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Is that what he told us to pray? And that don't mean when a lot, I, I preach a lot of funerals and a lot of uh, ceremonies or whatever. We always have people bow their heads and say the Lord's Prayer. And I always pray that what he said in Matthew 6, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And every time I pray that prayer in a group of people without fail, some small aleck out there in the congregation will say on earth instead of in earth like I didn't know what I was talking about. But the Lord didn't say, pray your will be done on earth. He did say that in Matthew 18, but he said, if any two of you on earth agree as touching anything, he said, shall be done. If you agree on earth, he said, God will make it so in heaven. Ain't that what he said? So we got to first invite God down here. You got to call God down. And he said, when you pray in Matthew 6, don't pray for his will on the earth. Pray that his will be done in earth. And the reason he said in earth is because the same thing Paul said here in 2 Corinthians, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So when he tells us, pray, God, let your will be done in earth, what he's actually saying, pray, is let your will be done in my life. Let your will be worked out in my life. And a lot of times we're in so much despair and we're so perplexed because we don't know how to submit to the will of God. You have to allow God to have his way in your life. And even though you're going through, even though you're perplexed, even though you're in despair, a lot of times we put ourselves in position. How many of you ever messed up your own life? I need to put up both hands. How many of you ever got your own self in a mess? So you need to start praying, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Because we are just earthen vessels, we don't know what's the Bible says it's not in man that walketh to direct his own step. You are not smart enough to lead and guide your own life. You need somebody helping you. You need the will of God for your life. You need to be praying, God, you do what I need done. Because we make mistakes. We get it wrong sometimes. We go for what look good, what smell good, what taste good, what feel good. But the Lord said, hey amen, everything that look good, feel good, smell good, and taste good ain't always good for you. And you can get yourself in a mess. Hey amen. Some of you women married the wrong man because you just wanted somebody good looking. Some of you men married the wrong woman because you just wanted somebody good looking. Women, go get yourself an ugly man that'll work a job. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> That'll treat you like a princess. Now, if you can find a good looking one, that's all right. But you can't always go for what look good. Men, when you're looking for a wife, don't look for somebody that look good because her nails are so good looking, she don't want to wash dishes. Her hair looks so good, she don't want to clean the house. Oh, hallelujah. Find your old-fashioned woman, amen, that knows how to cook, amen, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Oh, hallelujah. You get yourself in a mess doing what your flesh wants when you need to be praying, Lord, what is your will for my life? Amen. amen. If you ask God for his will, amen, let your will be done in this earthen vessel. Lord, I'm just dirt. I'm just dust. I'm just ashes. I need something more. So God formed man out of the dust of the earth, but he then he breathed in his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul, not because he was dirt, but because God put something in him, and we near, still need God working his will. In a, whether you saved or unsaved, I teach unsaved people, you need to pray, even if you ain't saved. Teach your kids to pray, even though they ain't saved. Amen. I had to fight against this demon years ago. Amen. God don't hear a sinner's prayer. He does hear a sinner's prayer. He don't hear a sinner laying hands on the blind and say, your blind eyes be open. You can't do that. But you can say, God, have mercy on me. 
God helped me in my life. I made a mess of things. Now I'm praying, not my will, but thy will be done. You are nothing but dust and ashes. You need the living God to help you in your life. And the thing about it is, no matter how big a mistake you made, God is willing to help you. Amen. Amen. You got to prepare yourself for his will. This is how Jesus came in Hebrews 10. Let's read this. Here's the thing about the will of God. Most of us aren't ready to submit to God. We just might as well sign on to it. We want to do what we want to do, how we want to do it, when, where we want to do it. God has to prepare you to say, yes, Lord. But God has a way, amen, to get us down enough where we'll say, not my will, but thy will be done. How many has ever ran into a brick wall? I mean, never said, I'm going to do it my way no matter what. And you had to learn your way was the wrong way. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus was the only vessel to come into this world already prepared for the will of God. The rest of us, we have to be made ready. Let's look at Jesus here in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Wherefore, verse 5, when he cometh into the world, Jesus was born ready. For the will of God. He had to mature into it, but he was born ready for the will of God. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offer thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. Why did I come? To do thy will, O oh God. He was born. He was sent into the world to do the will of God. He was sinless. Is that right? He was born sinless and he lived a sinless life. Now you and I, we were born in sin. We were bred for sin. Started lying before we could talk good. Did you steal that cookie out of the cookie jar? No ma'am. Crumbs all around your mouth. Your grandkids learn how to curse before they learn how to talk. Y'all see them all on the internet. Amen. Dancing and boogieing and don't even hardly know how to walk. Born for sin. The nature is in us. So God has to make us. He has to mold us to be able to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Because we all want to do things our own way. Amen. We all are hard-headed kids. We all are disobedient children. So God has to fashion us. So he fashions us through his word and through teaching us to pray, God, not my will, but thy will be done in this earthen vessel. The reason he put us in earthen vessels is so that we don't get lifted up in pride. Pride is one of the greatest things that God hates. Y'all know that? The Bible says he knows the pride of fall. And all flesh is prone to some kind of pride or another. Proud of how you look. Proud of how smart you are. That was one of mine. Proud that you can do stuff better than other people. Proud that you have more money than somebody else. You got some kind of pride that all flesh is dealing with. So he made us earthen vessels. Amen. And he said, when you pray, pray, Father, don't let my will be done. Your will be done in this vessel of clay. 1 Corinthians 1. God is getting us ready for something. I believe God is doing something by his spirit. And he's got people that he's getting ready for the will of God. Sinners out there getting ready for the will of God. God's going to use some people. I want to be one of them. But he can't use me in my own will. It has to be his will and not mine. Even Jesus, as fitted as he was, came to a place where his will opposed the will of God. Did y'all find that in the Bible? When it was time to be crucified. Take this cup from me. But he had enough sense to pray, not my will, but thine be done. And all of us going to have to learn this somewhere or another. Amen. You keep living for God, you're going to learn you can't live for God on your own terms. Amen. He's a good dad. 
good parents from the 70s and 80s, when I was raised, they taught us, I'll run it, you run around in it. We didn't have no rights when we was raised. Kids today got rights. We didn't have rights. We didn't know what rights was when we was raised. We knew what the belt was. We knew what the backhand was. But we didn't know what rights were. When they told us to do something, we did it. We didn't ask questions. We didn't protest. We didn't drag our feet. Amen. But this modern generation is like the modern church and modern people want to question God and argue with God. God is always right and I'm always wrong. No matter how you feel about it, God is always going to be right about it. And we have to learn to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God to do it his way. I'm going to tell you something about your flesh. It's made of dirt, and it's going to go back to dirt. And no matter how much you wash it, it's going to be dirty again tomorrow. You're going to have to wash it again. There's a nature that's dirty in us. We have to learn the will of God. We have to learn to submit. We have to learn to say, God, you have your way. I'm going to tell you, a lot of our problems is because we are rebelling against the will of God. And he has to teach us. I want to be taught. Humble ourselves. Because God's going to use some people. I believe this. He's getting us ready for something. You believe this, Sister Perry? There's a revival still coming. I've heard it all my life, and it looked like God ain't going to do it, but God is still going to move by his spirit. And he's getting a people ready. And he's not looking for edge. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have a master's degree. You don't have to be the best looking. But God is going to use the people that know how to humble ourselves. So he says here in 1 Corinthians 1, 27. Well, let me go to 26. He's getting us ready for something. For you see your calling, brethren. Now here's the thing about the calling of God. He calls you before you even know his voice. Before you even know who he is. Paul was separated from his mother's womb. He was chosen. I was chosen. I didn't know it, but I was chosen. And I wasn't even in church. Amen. Stop putting your foot down on people because it may be God's people. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God's got people that you don't know he's got. He said, I have other sheep that are not in the fold. Them I must bring with me. And sometimes you got people out here that may not be living for God like you think they are, but they're still God's people. And it ain't always the best and the brightest. He picks the lowest. When he went to choose his disciples, amen, he didn't pick the high. He didn't pick Luke. Luke was not one of the twelve. He followed Jesus, but Luke had a degree, but he wasn't one of the apostles. You know who he chose? Cursing fishermen, un un uneducated people. Yeah. Amen. Yes, he, he don't always go for the best and the brightest. He don't always go for what the world calls. He looks for, sometimes he picks the ugliest vessels. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. He picks the one whose life is a mess. He picks the drug dealer. He picks the prostitute. Yes. He picks the hormone. And I don't care what nobody think about it. He picks gays and lesbians too. He just called them out. He said, I can do something with this. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the worst of people make the best saints. Yeah, Sometimes the one that grew up and said, I ain't never did nothing wrong, they make the worst saints. But the one, the Bible says, to whom much is forgiven, the same loveth much. Yeah. And they were trying to condemn that woman that was washing Jesus' feet. Hey, man, oh, this money could have been sold and all this. And then the Pharisees said if he was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is that's touching him. But he wasn't interested in nothing but her soul. Sometimes the one that God uses the most is the one he got to clean up the most. Be careful who you put your foot down on. Oh, hallelujah. I said, that ain't nothing but an old drug addict. They ain't worth nothing. God can pick them up, clean them up, and find something to use in a worthless looking vessel. Y'all ever watch the Antiques Road Show? I watch it sometimes. Sometimes the old beat up thing that don't look like nothing find out it's worth $5,000. I got it in the flea market for $2. What you mean it's worth five or ten grand? It ain't the thing that's the prettiest all the time. We choose the prettiest and the best looking. God said, I can get something out of that. So he says here in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 26, For you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, 
Not many noble or called. You know why? God can't do nothing with high-minded people. He can't. You don't see many rich people get into the kingdom. If you're broke and poor, thank God for it. <laughs> thank God you ain't got no money. Lord, have mercy. I was there. Jesus said, it's hard for a rich man. Y'all read the Bible? It's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven because people that got money tend to trust in their money. I said, how do you know? Prove it to me, Pastor. See how you're going to feel next month when you get your 5000 from income tax. Your spirit changes. Your attitude changes. You walk with your head up just a little bit higher. God loves poor people. But God has chosen, verse 27, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And what kind of things? Low things. Things that don't have a lot of honor. Things that don't have a lot of glory. Things that don't look so good. Don't worry about if people put you down. When God lifts you up, ain't nothing nobody can say about it. You may be the worst one in your family. You may be the color. But when God chooses you, he chooses base things. I thank God for that. Because some of y'all was the worst of the worst. Everybody talked about you. Even your own mama didn't like you. You were so bad. Lord, have mercy. That's the kind of people God can use. Amen. When your mama kick you out of the house. The Bible says when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Don't, don't put nobody down because God can use anybody. Anybody that he call and clean up, he can use them. I ain't putting my foot down on nobody. I ain't counting nobody out. And base things of the world and things which are, what's that next word, y'all? Despise. Oh, you worthless piece of nothing. You'll never amount to nothing. When God gets a hold to it, watch out. Have God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Now notice this. Why did God do all of this? That no flesh should glory in his presence. All flesh likes to glory in something. All flesh is prone to get puffed up about something. I'm better than somebody. I'm better looking than somebody. I got more money than somebody. I can do this better than somebody. Let me, let me put it in ways that we understand. We all like a compliment. Don't lie. If it ain't nothing but you got a nice hat. You got a nice car. Brother Leo, nice truck. Pretty truck. Uh, you had an old broke down something. When you got that pretty truck, your spirit changed. <laughs> you get out of an old piece of car held together with duct tape and prayer, you just go to the store like this. But when you get out of a, a car that the truck, I ain't going to tell them how much a truck costs, but when you get out of that nice car, your head is high. You walk in the store, they will say, everybody looking at you, stepping out of that night. Y'all know how flesh is. Man, when I first got that car, man, I get out of that car, and I, I be walking tall. Yes, look at me. I, I just stepped out. I ain't in the Ford no more. I'm driving something nice. Flesh will get puffed up. Amen. Amen. Y'all women get these Louis Vuitton purses. How much y'all pay for these purses? Purse costs $500. You got $5 in it. But you feel good carrying it. They will say, everybody's looking at you. You got something nice. Hey, man, you get one of these uh, uh, tuxedos, get dressed up. Flesh likes to glory in carnal things. But the Lord, when he came, he was born in a manger. He was born in a stable. He didn't come high and lift it up. He came meek and lowly. And he stayed that way. All flesh looks for something to glory about. I got to be better than somebody else. That ain't the kingdom of God. Let's go over here to Acts, the 12th chapter. God's looking for humble people. Anybody applying for work? God is hiring. His only qualification is you realize I ain't nothing but dirt. Ain't nothing good God gonna come out of me except what you put in me. That's what God is looking for. Acts, the 12th chapter. 
And Herod was highly displeased with them, this verse 20, of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, he's dressed to the nines, ain't he? Sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. I'm going to tell y'all something. We're going to recognize every single ounce of glory in the earth belongs to God. I don't care what you're doing, where, how you're doing it. Anytime anybody offers any kind of praise, that praise belongs to God. So when you're in the house of God and you sing a song, you play an instrument, you preach a message, you testify, and people say how great you are, that glory, you're supposed to immediately give that glory to God and not keep it up on yourself because flesh wants that glory for itself. I'm telling y'all, I'm conditioning you this morning because God's going to use some people. So I said, how do you know that, Pastor? Because I'm flesh and I like a little glory myself. Y'all ain't going to tell y'all. I tell mine. But we all like a little glory. We all like people to think highly of us. Is that the truth? But when people praise you for anything, that praise goes to God. You wouldn't even have a heartbeat if it wasn't for God this morning. You wouldn't be able to breathe in and out if it wasn't for God. Everything you got comes from God. You are nothing but dirt and dust. And everything you get beyond that, it comes from God. Recognize you didn't do nothing of your own. So Herod made a speech. And everybody began to praise him. Did he give glory to God? Mm -mm. Verse 23. And immediately... The angel of the Lord smote him. Why? Because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating the worms and gave up the ghost. God don't like ugly. God don't like you still in his praise. Let's go over to Acts 14. Now Paul and Barnabas had some sense. They were men that were greatly used of God. As some of you are about to be. But they had enough sin. Some people will force praise on you. They took Jesus and tried to make him a king. But the Bible says he escaped out of their midst. Because he said, I receive not honor from men. Is that what he said? He didn't need nobody to praise him. They praised him because of who they recognized he was. But he didn't need it. Over here, verse 8. And there was a certain man at Lystra, Acts 14 and 8, impotent in his feet, being crippled, from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who suddenly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Oh my God. We're going to put it on Facebook. We're going to put it on Instagram. We're going to tell everybody how powerful we are that God has used us. Am I down here where we live? Oh, we want everybody to know. <laughs> Amen. That's what flesh is. Flesh wants some glory. But Paul and Barnabas had enough God sense to know this ain't me, y'all. I ain't nothing but dirt. And when the people saw, verse 11, what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of of men. Oh Lord, say that about some preachers and we're going to go get us a Cadillac immediately. <laughs> Rings on every finger. Big old purple robe put it around our shoulders. Paul and Barnabas had some sense. We're going to have to have some sense. Lord, I ain't nothing but dirt. And God allows us to go through so that we constantly remind it, I'm nothing but dirt. Without you, I can do nothing. No other preacher suffered in the Bible as much as Paul suffered. You know why he suffered so much? He said, lest through the abundance of the revelation, I be exalted above measure. Ain't that what he said? He said, God gave me a thorn in the flesh. And he sought the Lord three times to take it away. But God said, I ain't taking this away. You need this thorn. 
Oh, hallelujah. What are you saying? Sometimes we need to be troubled on every side. We need to, some people won't pray unless trouble comes. Oh, hallelujah. You pray when you're in trouble, but as soon as trouble is over, we stop praying. Oh, hallelujah. We're humble when we're suffering, but as soon as we stop suffering, we don't get so humble no more. Oh, God. If you would just take this away. Oh, Jesus, if you please help me. Oh, Lord, when you're in the hospital, you're humble. They're going to make sure you're humble in the hospital. They don't give you no clothes. <laughs> I was in that hospital. I said, honey, I need two rows. They want me to walk down this, this hallway. I need to be coming up. Hey, Amen. I saw a man once. I was going in for treatment, and he was so old, he didn't care. He was just hanging all out in the back. He was talking to people in the hallway. Uh-uh, I got to be covered up. They going to humble you in the hospital. Oh, God, have mercy. When that pain hits you, you get real humble. Anybody ever been through some real pain? Pain will humble you. But as soon as the pain is gone, as soon as the trial and the heart test is gone, flesh has a tendency to rise right back up. You ever been fighting with your brothers and sisters and they got you behind you? Say uncle. Oh, yeah. I ain't saying it. Say uncle. Y'all don't remember the 70s, do y'all? You had to say uncle. Yeah. Amen. And you as bad as you could be, but you said uncle so that they could let you go. But as soon as you got up, you start swinging. <laughs> Flesh can be humble, but the Lord has to keep putting us through things that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What teach us in Matthew 6. He said at the end of that prayer, he said, for thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Every ounce of power and glory belongs to God. None of it is yours. And if God uses you, you have to be in a place like Paul and Barnabas are. Lord, it's not me. This ain't nothing but God. But the people in the town said, these men are God. Let's worship them. You can't let nobody bow down to you. Even angels in the Bible didn't let them bow down to them. In the book of Revelation. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the people, then the priests of Jupiter, which were before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they ripped their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out, saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We are also men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. This is the humility of that the Lord is looking for. This is the humility that Peter had when he healed the man over here in the Acts 4, Acts 3. When he did it in Acts uh, 3. Let's read this here. God knows how to get us in position. They want to know how in the world did they do it. Let's read Acts 3, verse 11. And the lame, as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly wondered. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or look ye so earnestly, where at y'all? On us, as though by our own power, our holiness, we had made this man to walk. You know how Peter got this humility? Suffering. He went through so much, he learned how to give God his glory. As though by our own power of holiness, we had made this man to walk, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he would have, when he was determined to let him go. Let's go to verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong, whom ye see and yet know. Yea, the faith which is by him 
hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He gave God the glory. Back to 2 Corinthians 4. God's going to have a people he's making ready. I want to be a part of it. I say, God ain't moving. Don't you feel the spirits of this time? I feel the spirit of God. I know God is doing something for people. But we have, verse 7, this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So we go through some stuff sometimes. We are troubled, not just here and there, on every side. Pancake trials. You can't get out of one trouble before another trouble starts rising up. Devil ain't got no control in your life. The law is going to work things out. Y'all believe this? So while we're troubled, he said we are not distressed. We are perplexed. Sometimes you get in stuff you don't know how to get out of it. But don't despair. God knows when to bring you out. Not in despair. We're persecuted, but we are not forsaken. God hasn't left us. We're cast down, but we are not destroyed. Always bearing about in this earthen vessel, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus. This is why we go through all this that we went through in these last few verses is so that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Something is about to happen. Second Timothy. God is getting the people ready. I'm going to be a part of this. I want to get in. The Bible says even the angels desire to look into this Holy Ghost experience. I want to be a part of it. Second Timothy. The second chapter. God's got all kind of vessels. Here's the thing. He has to keep you pliable. He has to keep you as clay in the potter's hand. So 2 Timothy. The second chapter, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, earthen vessels, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, now the Bible says purge himself, but we know only the word can clean us up. When he says purge yourself, he means let the word of God get down in your heart and clean you up. That's what he's saying. You can't clean yourself. It takes the word of God. If you could perfect yourself, you wouldn't need him. We're clean through the word that he speaks. Y'all understand what he's saying here. If you let the word clean you up. Somebody say, how do you know that? Because Jesus had 12 disciples. Huh? Judah spent the whole three and a half years and he would not let the word clean him. Some people come to church week after week, but they don't let the word sink down and clean them. You have to allow the word to get down in there. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. And what's this next word? Prepare. You got to be made ready. God has to situate you. God has to make you and mold you. How many times? Once? No. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. This is why you keep going through. Jeremiah 18. God get us just about situated. And we go back to our old ways. Anybody ever done that other than me? Feel like you're on your way with God. Oh, I got it now. I'm praying, I'm doing everything he told me to do. And a trial comes and you go backwards. God sends suffering to make us. The devil sends suffering to break us. Ain't nothing like going through a trial. The devil uses it to make you go back to your old ways. You're going through so much, you need a cigarette. 
You're going through so much, you need to get drunk. You're going through so much, you need to get high. Why live for God if he's allowing you to go through this? God is trying to make us. Amen. 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 It'll be, it'll be over in a minute. But I got to give you this word because somebody's going to be getting ready. I know I ain't the only one. I'm trying to get ready. Yes. So I'm yes. allowing him to break me yes. and remake me. Yes. Amen. Amen. We'll never let go of our ways and the way we do things unless God sends something every once in a while to break us. Yes. Yes. Because we like the life that we made for ourselves. We're used to Amen. We're used to how we live our lives and sometimes God has to get us out of our routine, out of our own way, get us over ourselves and that only can happen if he can break you. If you're too proud to be humble, God cannot use you. He has to be able to break us, to remake us and he does that over and over again. Jeremiah 18 but he's making you into something. One day we're going to get there. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Y'all know what potter is made from? Dirt. Clay, out the ground, base things, humble things. This is what God uses. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Anybody messed up since you've been saved? Anybody got on the wrong path since you've been saved? Anybody needed the Lord to come back and change you and save you again after you got saved? Anybody needed to be rewashed after you got saved? He was in the hand of the potter, but it was marred in the potter's hand. He was working on it, and it still went bad, but it was still in his hand. That's why I teach people, stay in his hand. Even if you make a mistake, don't leave the Lord. Because your only hope of getting it right is with Jesus. Marred in the hand of the potter. So what did he do? Did he throw it away? No. Thank God he didn't throw us away. God don't give up on us like we give up on one another. So he made it again another vessel. Oh, thank God for the blood. I thank God that the Lord can wash you and bring you out of what you got into and clean you up. People may never forget what you've done, but the Lord, he don't remember that no more. He can remake you, can Wash you, sanctify you. Folks still bringing up what you did 30 years ago, but it's already under the blood. That's the devil makes somebody bring up what you did 30 years ago or 20 or two years ago. But you repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I'm, sometimes, I'm going to tell you, sometimes the best thing that happen to people is for them to fall and become humiliated to recognize ain't nothing good in my flesh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes people backsliders sometimes can do more for God than those of us that stayed in the church and never made a mistake. We need to recognize we ain't nothing but dirt, y'all. God has to wash us and sanctify us, and a lot of us have had to be remade again, including myself. God has had to break me to make me over again. And I thank God for it. I thank God for every hard trial, every time I was distressed, perplexed, troubled, persecuted, all of that God used to make me another vessel. It wasn't the break. The devil wanted to destroy me, but God said, I'm going to remake you. You got some stuff that's wrong. I've had a lot of stuff that was wrong since I've been saved. And the Lord has had to make me. So he made it again another vessel according to whose will. Not as it seemed good unto the clay, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, O church of God, O called of God, even if you ain't in the church, if you call, this word applies to you. Cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, 
so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. He will make us over and over and over again. Is that right? Amen. Don't get hard. Don't get puffed up. Don't get to thinking that God, I've already got it made because God may have to remake you again. Amen. But he's got a will for your life. And your prayer is not my will, but thy will be done. You called me for a purpose. I'm closing. And you don't know what the purpose of God is for your life until he brings you into it. But he has to keep remaking us and remaking us. But he said, if you let God purge you, you'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap if you can receive that today. Father, we thank you for picking up this old dust and this old dirt and making something out of us, putting the will of God in our lives and teaching us from Romans 8 that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Lord, you got people that may not be where they ought to be, but you're working on their lives. You're molding them. You're making them. You're breaking them sometimes and remolding us all over again. Help us to be clay in your hands. Help us to not be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, but to always be moldable, always say, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, we submit to you on today. Work out your will in every life of every hearer in this house of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord one more time. Thank you for your attention. Amen. Does anybody need prayer for anything? I know the Lord is for you this morning. The Lord is reaching out. Amen. He's making up his jewels, his vessels. All right. God is still good. He's still working on you. Amen. The way the Lord touched you. Lord, I know you touched this woman's life. God, you hit her with such a grace of God and the spirit of God. The devil's trying to keep her and destroy her life. But the Lord is breaking you and making you. The Lord won't let the devil destroy you. All that you've been through is for your making. The Lord loves you. And he's calling you for his will and for his purpose. Lord, get up through these hard trials. Get up through these tests and these, these things that are almost destroying her. But Lord, we ask you to keep her by your power and by your spirit. Make a difference by the grace of God in her life on the day. God, touch her life by your power and by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. God, bring her out of this thing. Bring her out of this thing by your power. Amen. The Lord is reaching for you today. He's sending a word for you today. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. She goes through a lot. But she made her way to the house of God. Somebody pray for her on the day. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Y'all pray with me. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we praise you for the for your word. God, we praise for your people, God. God, even this sister, God, do a clean job, oh God. God, we thank you, God, even for the young man in the back, God. God, continue to move from him, God. Watch over me, God. God, in the name of Jesus, God, move, God, by your spirit, God. God, to each and every one here, God, for everybody, God. God, in Jesus' name, God, give us a hunger, God, a desire for the word of God like hell before. God, we need to pray to you glory in Jesus' name. God bless you. You're going to leave the truth. You're going to leave the truth.